everybody's there. Like, it's 400 people in that mug. So it's not like some private, like, secret room. Now, I don't know what was going on in the house. We was outside, so we outside. I don't know what's happening in the house. I'm not, I'm not invited into the house. It's a velvet rope. You know what I'm saying? And some people went back behind the velvet rope, but there was a bodyguard right there. Now, what went on behind the velvet rope? I can't tell you, but the general, the people who was outside was not allowed to go back there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm there with Nelly, me and Nelly chopping it up. Chris Brown's having a dance off with some people. Jimmy Iovine and Madonna over there chilling. Like, it's just a barbecue. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like this. I think people, when you don't have access to it, your brain is creating scenarios, but it was a barbecue. It was like a outdoor Think of anything outdoor, a mixer. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is, your boy, Mr. J Hill. J Hill Podcast. We are in the building. And listen, man, y'all know I suck at introductions. So look, I'm just letting y'all know now. We're gonna try something different. You know, I've been watching some... Shannon Sharp, watching a little bit of, uh, what's her name, Brandy Harvey. I mean, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they've been doing that thing on the introduction. So I was like, you know, everybody always compliment me on, a, on a, um, the research I do and that I, I do my homework. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get my real journalistic bag and do an intro myself, all right? So let's see. I'm, I'm going to read out my phone. I ain't, I ain't being disrespectful. I got a phone, but I'm going to put the phone down when I'm done, all right? So let's, let's, let's get it done. So our guest today is singer, songwriter, record producer, executive, actor and entrepreneur who has released 10 solo albums and mixtapes, right? Yeah. Working with some of the most respected names in the industry, he is the president, co co-owner and co-founder of independent record label Reach Records. But his talent does not stop there. He's also a college graduate, a devoted father, husband, a New York Times best-selling author, a thought leader, and a philanthropist whose impact goes way beyond music. In 2013, he partnered with Dwayne Wade and Joshua Du Bois on a multimedia initiative, This Is Fatherhood, as a part of the Obama administration's fatherhood and mentoring initiative. And during COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, he worked with Love Beyond Walls to provide a hand, a hand washing stations and food to homelessness, homeless people in Atlanta. With two Grammy Awards and eight Dove Awards under his belt, he made history in 2013 as the first hip-hop artist to win a Grammy for Best Gospel Album with his groundbreaking album, Gravity, in 2015. He continued to break barriers by becoming the first rapper to win BET Award Best Gospel Album. Please join me in welcoming <laughs> a true trailblazer, a man who continues to use his pl platform to inspire, uplift, and bring about real change, a Houston legend. Lecrae is in the building. Y'all make some noise for Lecrae. Wow. Make some noise back there. God, eh, you feel me? Hey, My first time ever doing that, man. It's all good. I told myself I ain't going to read on camera, man. But You did good. You did good? Yeah, you What's did up, good. Man? You did good, man. Yo. You missed a couple. There's a few Grammys you didn't count, but it's I did. not a no, big tell deal. Tell me, tell me. Let it's me just, know. Just, no, just, no, let me know, It's bro. just a couple of them. It's a couple of them? It's not a big deal. It's not okay, a big so, deal. So you got four then? Yeah, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's I'm just trying game. to help you out for the future. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm cool with that. I ain't, yeah, I ain't, I don't, it's, hey, it's I ain't, I ain't be on repose now. Yo, <laughs> so yo, it's funny. Um, doing my research, yeah, and learning and getting to know you. Oh my gosh, bro. Mm, uh -oh. I don't even know where to start, bro. Uh oh. It's it's not bad though. Oh, I bet. It's it's almost refreshing. Okay. Res I feel respect. like you um. You try your best one to embrace this human side. Mm -hmm. of life right mm -hmm. but in embracing human side of life like we can't ignore i don't want to say the elephant in the room i know you don't like to be called like a, a gospel rapper yeah I know but i mean, mean. it's the just, spiritual side yeah yeah it is what it is yeah you doing spiritual music or or, or bringing god into your music has yeah. kind of almost made the the people want to put you in a box for sure but with that people label you as a gospel rapper yeah right yeah but you yourself, like I was saying, it's like you, I don't want to say you teeter the line, but like just sometimes it can be hard and conflicting of trying to be like just a person. Mm. But then what everybody else wants you to be, this God fearing man, how that's supposed to look. Right, right, right. And I'm like, bro, this is this is me. I'm not even gonna lie to you, bro. Mm. And I'm like, I deal with that. I 
I face those 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 struggles all the time, and it's like, man, I know I want to, I want to do, I want to dedicate my life to God. I want to be all about God, but at the same time, I am human. Yeah, and I know nobody is perfect for sure. And I was wondering, like, how are you dealing with that now? Is you've been dealing with it for so long, and you would think it's done. You used to it now, but I'm pretty sure you still have to deal with that. Yeah, it's always gonna be, <clears throat> it's always gonna be some elements you know, where there's a challenge because people have an idea of what a, a Christian looks like, an idea of what somebody who loves God looks like. You know, they got this picture in their mind, and then when you don't fit it, then they throw you out, mm -hmm. or they have this expectation. Well, since, you know, you say you love God, you should look like this, you should dress like this, you should sound like this, you shouldn't do this, or you should do this. And so... You know, I gotta, I can't live for other people's acceptance. You know what I'm saying? Because the whole idea of being a Christian is you, you've been accepted by God. You know, it, it, I can't earn my way to heaven. I gotta like trust that He's the one that made me the way that I am. Mm. He's the one that made me righteous, not because of anything that I did. So, so I'm not some, trying to walk around like, look at me, look how perfect I am, look how much I got it together. I'm more so saying I'm a human just like you. Mm. You know what I mean? I go through the same struggles you go through. This is how I'm dealing with it. You know what I mean? How are you dealing with it? And, and let's let's meet on that common ground. Um, but but yeah, it's it's, it's always gonna come with something. It's always gonna, somebody gonna have something to say about it. Man, I'm looking back on it, bro. Almost, I I kind of want to ask you. Like, seems like you've been beat up so much by the people that you try to stand beside mm. or be a face for. Yeah, and that's Christian people. Yeah. And but, um, yeah. my question is like, what keeps you motivated to one or two things? Continue to call yourself a Christian uh -huh. or even like continue to do this music thing because it could go either way. I could, you could say, man, I'm done with both of them. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I mean, there was a period of time where, where I did say, yo, I, I don't, I'm not rocking with this faith no more because I was tired of getting beat up. Mm. I was tired of, you know, people bashing me and, you know, it's the religious people coming at you sideways. One of the things I had to realize is, oh, yeah, that's who killed Jesus was the religious people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I realized, oh, I'm in good company. And then, you know, this faith ain't something that you can just walk into and walk out of. It's something that you really get born into like like reborn into like you made a different person so it's not like a gang where i can get jumped out it's like either i believe this or i don't so regardless of what these people around me doing this is really what i believe so i can't let these folks dictate my relationship with god and so i had to come to grips with like you know even gandhi said you know i, I like your jesus it's, it's his followers that I have a problem with. Mm. You know what I mean? So for me, I think I just came to the place where it's like, you know what? That's why when he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Because people, like you said, we all imperfect. So you imperfect, even those people who follow in God, they still misjudge, they, 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 they backbite, they slander, and it shouldn't be that way. But I got to realize everybody ain't mature. Everybody ain't growing. Everybody ain't progressing. And, um... And I had to take those on the chin and say, well, you know, what am I here for? I'm not here to please them. I'm here to, I'm on my mission. As far as the music is concerned, you know, I never sought out to be, I wasn't trying to be no gospel rapper. I didn't even know that existed. First of all, if I would have known, I would have thought it was corny. So I would have never tried to pursue it. I was just a, a kid who found God and was like, yo, I got to change what I'm talking about. Mm. So, you know, I always tell people like, Lauren Hill was like the first person I ever heard that sounded like, oh, this is what I want to do. Cause she was talking about her faith and her journey. And I remember just, you know, as a kid in my room, like, yeah, that's what I want to do. Um, so the music part, I'm always going, that's just in me. And telling telling the truth and and the lens how I see it from, that's in me too. So ain't nothing gonna stop me from that. Yo, but even like um when we if you can go back to the spiritual side. Yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. For me, I don't think I ever talked about this, like, I don't even say, like, public Here at we all. Go. Like, I think um, the hardest part for me is, like, wanting it to make it to heaven. 
Okay. But it being so many ideas, ideologies, yeah. and teachings, yeah. right? We talk about false prophets, but everybody talk about false prophets. So yeah. it's like, who do we know? How do we? How can we tell when it's the true, the true word of God, right? How can you tell when it's really God speaking to you? Because even like doing my research on you, and it's like one of the, I think the couple, they were saying like how they had a, the, the husband was saying how he, how he had a, uh, like a prophet, like mm. he prop, was prophesized that yeah, like yeah, yeah. he was doing all this stuff, and I'm like, but people say this, yeah, and how, and I think you even said it. How can we say that? Well, he's God didn't come to him. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. right? But the same, the same way with that. Is the same way with how the teachings of the Bible, the teachings of God. And it's like, bro, like, man, I just want to make it to heaven. And it's like everybody <laughs> is teaching. And it's like, bro, how do I know which one to choose? Yeah, I love that. First of all, I respect the fact that you put that out there. Like, because a lot of people wouldn't be that honest and transparent mm. and just be real about it like that. Like, but it's funny because I remember being there too. <clears throat> so I studied a lot of religions because, like, that was kind of my issue. It was like, yo, I, when I die, where do I go? You know what I'm saying? Like the first thing, first issue I had was this. <clears throat> is there a God? Mm. That was my first issue. Right. So then I had to be like, okay, is there a God? Like if there's a God, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do I know? So first I was like, I don't know if I believe there's a God. And then I remember my homeboy, I was in high school. He said, um, he said, yeah, ain't no God. It's just us, man. We got to figure this out on our own. And that, kind of scared me when I thought about it because I was mm. like, I was like, bro, I just learned how to drive. You know what I'm saying? I got to figure out life and death and everything on my own. Like the whole thing is on my shoulders. That was kind of scary to me. So I was like, I don't know if I like that. And then the other thing that, that rocked me was like, if there's no God, then we don't have no purpose, right? Because we just cosmic accidents. We just atoms and cells. So nothing matters. But ain't nobody living like nothing matters. I want to matter. I know you probably want to matter like, so if there's no God, nothing matters. So who cares? So I can't get pissed off if somebody steal my money, my car, because nothing really matters. Nobody should be going to prison because there's no such thing as right or wrong because there's no good or bad or good or evil because there's no God. So I think first I had to land a the plane there like, yo, now there has to be a God because there's a standard of good and evil. Every human being knows like right from wrong. You know what I'm saying? So there is a standard. So there is a God. Now, which God is it? You know, that's that was my next thing. So, man, I'm studying Islam. I'm studying Rastafarianism. I'm not fooling with Christianity because that's like the go-to. That's like grandma thing. I'm like, eh, I'm good on that. I'm studying Buddhism. And it's a lot of beautiful principles in all of them. Rastafarianism, because I smoked a lot. I was like, I like this because I can smoke. You know what I mean? A lot of great principles in all of them. But the common denominator was... You got to be on your P's and Q's. In Islam, you know what I'm saying? There's so many things that are haram. There's so many things that are like, hey, yo, you got to have it together. You better make sure you're getting your prayers right. And nobody can guarantee you heaven in Islam. You just, it's, it's upon Allah's mercy. So it's like, dang, ain't no guarantee. I got to get on my grind. And I was like, bro, I like pork. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like, I like these women. Like, I was like, I like, yo, I can't keep up. Buddhism, I got to reach enlightenment. I got to like get to a place where, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I have enlightenment or Hinduism. You know, it's like I, I, I. And then finally, when I said, all right, let me research Christianity, it was the only one that made sense because it was like God knows you imperfect. You'll never be able to get yourself to heaven in your own strength. You'll never be able to be good enough. You would need a perfect person to reach down and pull you up. And that was the whole idea of, of Christianity is God became human, came to the ghetto, lived a horrible life, was killed by his own people in order to take all of our wrong on his back so that when he resurrects, we do too. I said, I rock with that. But then like you, I'm a skeptic. I'm like, how do I know this is true? This ain't true. So I really went to research mode. I started like going to Bible institutes and reading stuff. And a lot of stuff is a little skeptical, but the more you, the more you look at the truth, the easier it is to spot the fakes. Like mm -hmm. last thing I'll say is just like, when it comes to like diamonds or like counterfeit money, like they don't teach you, they don't teach you how to study the counterfeits. They teach you 
to study the real deal so you know it so closely when you see a fake dollar, a fake $100 bill, you know that's not real. Or you see a fake diamond, you know that's not real because you spend so much time with the real thing. So I think for me, I just spent so much time with the truth. I can see stuff now. I can see like that ain't it, that ain't it, that ain't it. And it, it's a process, but I think, man, that's part of it is just God just opening your eyes to be like, all right, I see it. But how, so like even like they say like our whole purpose on earth is to tell somebody else about God so they can get to eternal life, right? Have eternal life and get the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. You being somebody who's been on the opposite side, having people like constantly judge you and pick at you yeah. and ridicule you. But when you know the truth is like, you kind of want your people, you want your people to be exposed to the truth so they yeah. can get to, get, to, get to heaven as well. Cause For that's sure. like the highest form of, I don't know, celebration that you can have, For right? Sure. Yeah. How do you balance that without kind of coming off judgy? Like, cause it's things that I've learned to this day where just through my walk of Christianity, yeah. some th things are really different from when I, what, what, what I was uh, exposed to being young. And yeah. then a lot of my peers are exposed to now, right? Yeah. And I want my my only goal is like, bro. I just want you to, I just want you to get the truth so you yeah. can get to the kingdom heaven with me. But yeah. when our truths don't coincide or they look different, it come off judgmental, and that's mm -hmm. the last thing I want to do. But so, how, yeah. It, how, it, what is it, that? So for me, how do you balance that? That's a process. It's been a process because I done dropped the ball a million times, right? Like I done dropped the ball a million times where, you know, I don't come from a, a Christian family, so my mom was like, "Yo, what you on right now? All you talk about is Jesus." All like it felt judgmental it's like yeah but you need to da, 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 da. and then somebody told me they said yo man stop preaching to her and live out what you believe mm. you know what i'm saying like yeah. live it out like when the last time you cut the grass for her when the last time you wash the dishes when the last time you clean up the kitchen for her that's gonna speak way louder than you keeping coming to her every day trying to tell her about yeah god let me tell you what god said let me tell you what the words say let me like live it you know what I mean? So somebody is interested in your life, like, yo, that's respectable, like, how you move. I see how you move. You know what I mean? Why Why do you live like this? That's going to speak louder anyway. It's, 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 like that. it's like that anything. It's like, if you grew up in the streets and you see a dude always barking and he's like, yeah, I'm the toughest, da 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 It's like, mm, you got to show me. Mm -hmm. You got to show me. If that's really what you're about, you got to show me because I don't believe I don't believe all this barking. So, but 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 somebody who really moved like that, I believe it. Or somebody who always talking about, yeah, I got money, I got this, I, yeah, I got this, I got that, I got that. People who got money like that, they don't, they don't talk about it like that. Mm -hmm. They show you, you won't see it. So for me, it's like, I don't gotta go around, I'm not here to condemn nobody. I'm not here to be your judge. But I want you to be able to walk away saying, yo, I, I respect buddy, like I see love in him, I see joy, I see peace. Like I want that, you know what I mean? Like let's, let's rap on that. Cause at the end of the day, I ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in. All mm -hmm. I really want for you is to be a healthier version of yourself, is to understand what you was made to be. You know what I mean? So, I I'm, I mean, people are judgmental, but I feel like people are judgmental and self-righteous because they learn something and they see something that's wrong, but they don't realize it ain't their job to fix it. Mm. It's their job to either help a person or pray for the person. You know what I mean? Last thing I'll say is like, if I get on a bus and I'm sitting down on a bus or the subway, whatever, and a blind man get on the bus with me, he got his cane, he tapping, he tapping, he step on my foot, bump into me. I'm not going to be mad at him. I'm not going to be like, yo, man, watch where you going. I'm going to show him where to go, show him how to get to where he need to be. I think that's the way we got to be with our friends. If we see him like moving blind, you can't be like, yo, stupid. That's a dumb decision. You dumb. God don't like that. It's like, ah, uh, you can't really see well. Let me show you. You know what I mean? Let me lovingly guide you to a better seat. And that's mm -hmm. how I try to move. No, nah, you know, it's fine. I think that comes from a passion, though. Like, because even, like, when I first got introduced to, like, the truth, as, as I call it, when you first get introduced to God or reintroduced to God, it's like you're so passionate, you want everybody to see. Yeah, so yeah. now it's like, I think it's like so many, it's, it's, it's different tiers to like being saved. Like you got your first tiers, like when you're super excited, you go around telling everybody, yeah, yeah. right? And then like you might slow down a little bit yeah. and then you get the second guess. It's like whatever, but 
I think it comes from the passion that sometimes we gotta understand or know how to differentiate when is this they just passionate about God. Yeah. They don't mean no harm. Yeah. He just he just wanna give everybody the truth like yep. he got it. Cause he, he when you first learn something, you want everybody, everybody. to know. Everybody. You feel me? Like it's, yep. when you like something, like I like to play space. I want everybody let's play space. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I like the Facts. You feel me? So I get it. Facts. Yo, how old were you when your friend, when you first got introduced and you asked your friend, yo, um, you want to know about God? He was like, just us down here. How old were you then? And he was like, man, 17. I gotta be somebody. 17. So even in that moment, cause yeah. your pops left. Yeah, pops left. Your mom sent you. Stay with my grandmother. To your grandma, right? Yeah, yeah. So in this moment, I can only imagine as a 17 year old, it's like, you probably feel by yourself. It, yeah. You probably feel like you're not good enough. You probably feel like, like, damn, like, it would be easy to convince you that we are here by ourselves. Yeah. Why wasn't it? Why didn't you? Because <clears throat> you were still that's there. That's a good, that's, I like, okay, I see what you're doing. I like <laughs> how you're asking questions. That's what's up. You know what? It's funny that you asked that because I did feel like I was on my own. You know what I mean? Like, and I and I was maneuvering. Like, I'm riding a city bus in middle school. You know, I'm like a city kid. I can maneuver by myself. I, I, I stayed at home by myself since I was like seven years old. Mom got to work. Go stay with grandma, whatever. I, like, I knew how to do so many things. So I had a sense of like, I got this. But when it came to like, you got to figure out your whole life. I was like, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Everything, like I gotta figure it all out. And I'm 17, so I'm on the verge of being a grown man and being out the house, and I'm feeling like, yo, I don't have all of that figured out. Mm. I don't know if I like that. Like, that's a lot of weight to carry. It didn't make me say, there gotta be a guy. It made me say, I was kind of sad because I was like, dang, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. You know, it's like, that's a lot of pressure for an 18 year old, and then you out on your own. And you like, man, I ain't had no dad. Nobody show me how this works. There's so many things I realize I don't know. And the way I'm wired, I got to have the pieces together. I got to be, okay, what's this going to be? What's that? I got to figure this out. I got to figure that out. And I didn't have that. So I think it put me in a state of like paranoia. Like, nah, I don't like that. Why are you so confident that, yeah, it's just us? I'm like, nah, that's crazy. Because I don't know how to figure out the meaning of life for myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't got all that figured out. I'm just trying to make it day by day. Mm. Yeah. It's so, it's so many questions I got, bro. Cause again, like just me doing my research, I said it before, but it just seems like I see a man that was like, just like had to withstorm, with, like withstand so much pain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, it just, I don't know, it just made me feel the way. Cause I'm like, damn bro. Cause I feel that way. Like yeah. just the constant, um, misinterpretations of the message, mm -hmm. right? Like, I feel like mm -hmm. I, I constantly see you trying to, like, fight back of, like, yo, like, bro, it's not like that. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm one of the good people, bro. Like, you could trust me. Like, I'm not one of them, but it's like they continue to put you in that box of somebody that, that's a bad person, yeah. right? And But again, I'm not going to lie, bro. I'm going to be straight up. It remind me of your everyday Christian. I'm going to be straight up with you. Yeah. Super judgmental. Like, yeah. they, they super want to point the finger. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. I, but you know what? This is the thing. I think like the loudest, the loudest person in the room get all the attention. You know what I'm saying? So I think sometimes there's like a misconception. Uh uh uh, you know, um like it's the loudest person in the room is getting all the attention. So for a long time, I'll just use this as an example, like the South. For a long time, before Atlanta was like, the land of every opportunity. Yeah, you know what right. I'm saying? Like, people look down on the South. Mm -hmm. They was like, man, they country. They don't know this. They don't got that. They don't understand this. And it was like, nah, you just seen a couple loud characters that made you feel like that's the South. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that's what tends to happen in everything. So even, like, within the faith communities, it'll be them loud folks that get all that suck all the oxygen out the room, and you be like, that's what you think it is. So even like with women, it'll be like, they see a couple of terrible dudes. Like I was just at the studio the other day talking to a young dude. You know what I'm saying? He's 25, got a career, solid dude, great character. And you know, he 
he he like, man, they ain't choosing me right now. And the reason why that he I'm like, why do you think they're not choosing? He said, because I'm safe. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like the young girls want a little bit of suspense, a little bit of like maybe there's some danger in here or something like that. You know what I mean? And it's like ladies would be like, dudes are trash because some loud individuals on IG or TikTok or whatever are the loudest ones. I feel like it's the same in the faith community. It's like everybody going after these super pastors who make all this money and be manipulating people. But every day you pass these little bitty churches, every day, and there's some pastor in there just grinding, just loving people, just praying for people. He ain't getting no bread. He work another nine to five. Don't nobody never pay no attention to him because he not loud. You know what I'm saying? So it be the loud people online who be talking crazy. Like, oh, crazy, you, you this, you that, you yeah, da, 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 da. And I'm like, all right, bet. Y'all loud. That's fine. It make it seem like y'all are the, 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 the general population of everybody's perspective. Mm. But then it's like, I be walking through the mall, somebody like, yo, man, what you said, bro, that, man, it changed everything for me. And I'm like, but he ain't loud. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think we just got to get off that mindset of like listening to all of them. Them folks, they just loud, bro. Like they ain't the main voices. It's a lot of people out there who really solid and, and that's what I had to start learning. Because all I was listening to was them loud voices for a long time. Then I was like, yo, man, y'all just the loud ones. There's a lot of real solid folks who really rocking with me. And if I start listening to these voices, I'll be better. And like some, my man said a while ago, he said, you know, it's a lot of people out there who think I can do no wrong. I'm the greatest thing walking the face of the earth. It's a lot of people out there who think I'm the worst person in existence. Both of them are wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not the greatest thing walking the earth. I'm not the worst person in existence. I need people who are willing to take the time to know me and then see, like, okay, I see what it is. He's just a human like I'm a human and respect where, how I'm navigating this, this journey of life. Mm. Yeah. But like you said, there was a point where you was <sighs> what? paying attention to that, right? <sighs> what was the light? What was the, 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 the awakening moment like? Okay, it's a lot of people, but it's so many people that I'm overlooking. What, what was that wake up call? Mental health, man. Mental health breakdown. Like, like people, people act like <clears throat> that social media stuff ain't real. They, they can say it's not real all they want. Yeah, they act like it's not real, <laughs> like it don't have an effect on them. And and they like, yo, man, like, oh, why Meek Mill crashing out on social media? He a millionaire, da 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 da. That stuff get under your skin. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like. He crashing out because that stuff starts to get under your skin, especially if it's not true. And then it compounds. So I can't speak for me. I can speak for me. For me, it was compounding. So it was like I'd had a crazy day, something crazy happening in the house. Like at this point in time, like around this time in my in my situation, my marriage was trash. You know what I'm saying? We going through it. Um, you know, I'm dealing with you know, a lot of racist stuff going on. And then I'm like having some faith battles. And so it's just a bad day, right? I'm not, me and wifey not getting along. Some crazy racist situation just happened. I got blackballed over here. Then I pick up my phone. Lecrae, you, you're, you're trash. I'm like, yo, I'm about to crash out. Like, you know, that was the last thing I needed. That, that little microaggression that somebody just threw at me. So what started happening was, I'm just running a million miles an hour, going, going, going. And I'm not realizing, like, every time I pick up this phone, I'm ignoring all of the positive. I'm going straight to the negative, and I'm just documenting it. And, and then my response to it was, because at this point in time, I'm speaking up for, like, Philando Castile and, you know, like, George Floyd, all of them folks. Like, this is before George Floyd, but I'm speaking up for everybody who getting murdered in the streets. Like so, you still was getting criticized. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so I'm speaking up for them, but I got folks on a, you know, real racist folks who been my fans, but they didn't know how, how I felt about black culture. Mm. So then they saying crazy stuff to me. So I'm like, well, I'm going to go harder. So I go harder, they go harder. I go harder, they go harder. And then it just turned into like every day I feel like I'm in a war, you know what I mean, with these mindsets to the point where I would go places, I would do shows and people would be like, nah, he can't. We we not coming. We don't support him. They protested me. You know what I'm saying? And then it started affecting my bottom line. And I started really spazzing out because I had a show in Philly the year before. 
I did that show, it was like 1,500 people. Then I go back, it's 300. Mm. And, and most of them black. Jeez. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, this is crazy. Like, this affected my bottom line now. So I'm just like spiraling. And, <clears throat> you know, it got me to such a dark place mentally that I think I had to just back up. You know, I had to back off of everything. I had to get myself back together mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And that was a process. Like, that's a whole nother long journey. But I'll just say I hit so far rock bottom that there wasn't nowhere else to go but up. Mm. And then I learned some tools to stop listening to all these voices and to be like, all right, they just talking. And everything ain't for social media now. I learned that too. Like, we feel like we got to talk about everything. Like, you don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody can't handle that. Everybody don't deserve your vulnerability. You may want to talk about, like, my daughter's really sick right now. You don't got to share that with them folks. Tell your people. Mm. They don't deserve that level of vulnerability. You can give it to them if you want to, but what they going to do with that? They, you, you trust these strangers with that level of, you know, transparency? You know what I mean? So I just say I'm going to leave it alone. Yo, I ain't going to lie to you, bro. I empathize because they say, like, to whom much is given, much is required, right? Yeah. I don't think I, I would ever want to walk in, in your shoes, bro. Like, I ain't going to lie to you. And I'm a strong dude. Like, I'm like, yeah. I, I pride myself on being a strong dude. But I say that because, like, people have no idea, bro. I'm just thinking about think about it, bro. Your pops left, right? Yeah. Your mom's always working. She's listening to you with your grandmother. So you're raised by your grandmother. She, so she's older. Yeah. So it was a generation where, like, certain things we couldn't do. Yeah. Right, and especially older than me. So your your grandma was probably around my mom's age. My mom's seventy five, about to be seventy six. Yeah. yeah. So like they taught us in a very very different way than parenting is now. Mm -hmm. Ain't no talking back. Yeah. Ain't no why. Yeah. Ain't no why because I said so. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a sense of, but then she's also a woman, and I'm a tread lightly. I'm being careful, but I'm being real now, and and I, I consume both our upbringing. Yeah. Women have a sense to lead with emotions. Yeah. yeah right. Okay. They speak how they feel, mm -hmm. right? Especially my mom's at a time. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm unable to speak how I feel. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm. coming up already feeling unheard. I'm yeah. coming up already feeling like the pressures of wherever I'm from is on my back. Yeah. So anytime anybody want to say something, I want to snap. Yeah. In the most ignorant way, and I don't mean it like this, follow me. At the end of the day, I'm still a nigga. <laughs> I know exactly what you said. <laughs> and because I'm trying to turn my life around, I'm trying to be God fearing. I'm trying to, yeah. I'm trying to walk in the Boy. right direction, right? Boy, what people don't see is the battle between nah. me trying to leave alone everything that I got on my back that's pulling me back. My grandparents, my moms, the the me feeling by myself, everything. I'm trying to be this God fearing man. I'm trying to show y'all that we don't have to be a product of our environment. Yeah. Y'all have no idea. Yeah. But you can't slip. <sighs> not you. Not Lecrae. I can slip. I can make a mistake. Yeah. I ain't no, I ain't getting Grammys. I ain't, you yeah. feel me? People don't, they don't see the pressure that it is to be that celebrity and be the face of something. Like, so y'all can go ahead and criticize me all y'all want. But when I'm out in public and I see somebody in public. Yeah. You got to. How hard is it to, like, refrain from going back to everything that you knew at a time? Yeah, you know what it's like? Uh, if, if you ever seen the movie Baby Boy with Tyrese and Bing Rhames in the kitchen, and Tyrese get up, <clears throat> he start saying something crazy to, to Bing Rhames, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? And then Bing just like, <laughs> yeah, he get, get the, up. You know what I mean? You don't know. Him. And then they're like, they're like, get off of me. Like, I'm trying not to become that nigga. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm trying so hard. Like, I've been in prison. I don't want to be that no more. You, mm. like, you bringing that out of me. And it's like so many times, that's how you feel. It's like, y'all bringing that out of me. Um, I had to go to therapy, bro, because my coping mechanisms was, was all terrible. Like, you know, we was talking earlier, like, you know, like, part of the reason why I quit drinking was obviously, like, health. Like, you know, taking care of better my health. Other part was it was a coping mechanism for me. Because it was, like, it was too frequent. It was too frequent. It's like, oh, now I'm, like, relying on this. And, you know, my pops is a, a drug addict, too, so I know addictions in my family. I wasn't thinking about me being addicted to alcohol because I'm, like, I still, I'm grinding, I'm getting it, I'm making everything happen. But I was, like, no, nah, I'm dependent on this to deal with the stress. Cause I noticed every time I got off stage, got a drink. Every time I get through dealing with something like 
It's like, I got to relieve the stress. And it became like my go-to to the point where I'm like, I'm walking around in the airport and I'm like, man, I feel like this is an ulcer, but I can't tell. And I'm like, nah, I'm bugging. Like, you know what I mean? I'm doing, I'm, I'm drinking too much. So it's like I was, I was suffocating all of that anger, all that frustration with, you know, with drinking and then, you know, come to Zans and so on and so forth. It's like, let me just push it down. But then I'm like, nah, Pops, that was Pops escape. I'm not going that route. So I had to go to therapy, you know what I mean? Like, and it was my last resort. And then I had to be real in therapy because I didn't want to be real. I was like, I don't really want to do this. I don't really, I don't know you. I don't trust you. What if you a fan? Like, ah, this is a lot. You know, I had to really like, all right, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, you know, I'm I'm so low now, I don't care. I'm gonna tell you everything that's going on. And man, that lady saved my life. You know what I'm saying? Like literally saved my life because she helped me navigate all of that stuff and process all that stuff. And I had a safe place to process because a lot of times we think our partner, you know, is supposed to be that that place to process all that. That's a lot of weight to put on somebody. And they ain't trained for that. You know what I mean? My my wife is like, bro, I would I I'm here for you, but not like that. I don't got that. Like what what you need is a specialist. You know what I mean? So I think that helped me a lot was going through that process and then um really leaning on my brothers, you know what I'm saying? Like, like for real, for real. Like not on some like that's my dog. If he needs some money, I got him. I put some money on, you know what I mean? But like we so intertwined to where it's like there's nothing off the table. Like nothing's off the table. Like Whatever we dealing with, we going through, it's on the table because, man, that got to be dealt with. And we don't want nobody to have to go through that by themselves. Mm. Yeah. Yo, you speak about your wife a lot, man. And I think it was one moment where you said, like, y'all got married almost because of the pressure of the church. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was wondering, like, what was at the core that kept y'all, though? Like, what was that that y'all had? In each other that that kept you. I know therapy and things like that, but yeah. what was what did y'all have at the core? At the core, what we had for real, for real, was we was friends. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like like we was legit friends. Like I knew her. You know, I met her at, at at 18 years old. So fast forward 10 years down the line, we we get married. I had all that time. I knew her as my friend. So even when it was like, I don't like you as a wife we still had that foundation of friendship that we could build on. You know what I mean? So I think that's what, I won't say that's what kept us together, but it's what gave us hope that we should stay. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It was like, nah, we really love each other. We really enjoy each other when we, when we healthy and good. And we just got to start over. You know, we've been grinding so long. I think everybody get together. It's, it's different stages. Like you, you get together and in some seasons, you know, you you face to face where it's like, you know, you you can be face to face. You can you can see each other. And that's where we are now. But when we started, you know, we was back to back. We was dealing with all the trials and tribulations and get um, get the money right and do this. And you know what I'm saying? Then we had kids, we side by side. It's like, all right, we got to raise these kids. We got to figure this out. And then 10 years go by and you like, we washed. We ain't done no face to face. And it's like, we got to start over and, and and build that friendship again that we had. Because that's how we, we got together was being friends. And so, you know, one of our things was sports. That's one of our common interests. So we, I just, I, I said, man, I'm, I'm going to cash out. I'm going to get these season tickets. We go into these games. We start going to games, going to football games, basketball, soccer, all of them. And it just started. That was our thing. Mm. You know what I mean? And it was just like we cheering, we laughing, we talking about stuff, we laughing at people in the crowd, like crazy stuff happening. One time a dude was wilding, he was drinking too much, he about to throw something on her. And I've been in martial arts, and I was like, babe, I was really about to handle buddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had my moves in my brain, I was, and we laughing, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's that's what rekindled the relationship. Mm. Yeah. So when you say, like, the church, it was a pressure to get married. Yeah. What was that pressure? Um, It was just like, you know, you young, you just meet God, they instantly afraid that you're going to just be wilding. You know what I mean? Like, they want you to... 
not get the wilding and smashing everything left and right. So like y'all, y'all get married. Y'all get married. So y'all don't be just out here smashing, you know, and that was kind of thought process. And, you know, for me, I, I thought that was legit. It, there wasn't no compatibility. It wasn't no like, are y'all a good fit? It wasn't none of that. It was just like, do she love God? Do you love God? Y'all need to quit playing around and get married. And it wasn't no like, I was blessed that I we had developed a friendship. I really was blessed because I, I didn't know nothing else. I just knew they was like, you love God? She love God? And I, I remember asking them, you know, one of the pastors at the time, I said, I said, man, I don't know who to date because... I don't know who to choose. He said, man, find a woman who loves God and is willing to follow you. And I'm thinking of, like, at the time, all the ladies in the ministry, I'm like, that's half of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was like, well, pick one. Mm. So, I mean, everybody can't do this. I'm just saying I was blessed. You know what I'm saying? The ladies did like me. So I, I had the option to choose. So I just said, man, next one that walk around the corner, that's the one I'm going to pursue. Because I couldn't make up my mind. I was like, I don't know. I'm paralyzed. And by the grace of God, she ran, she walked around the corner. And I was like, all right, that's the one I'm going to go chase after. So then I went after her. But, you know, I also did that, too, because where I'm coming from, the lifestyle I was coming out of, you, you willing to do whatever you got to do because you don't want to go back. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I'm so scared of going back. What do I got to do? You know what I mean? Can, can I ask you this? Yeah. Do you think, um, of course, when we knew in our faith, like, we trying to do everything in our power to get closer to God, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes that's like making the easiest decision. Yeah. So, well, you wasn't together yet. So I remember that time, for me, I didn't want to, um, like, I like drinking. Yeah. Cursing is something that I just, I do. Yeah. Right? I'm trying to stop. But I had a girl. Yeah. And I've been with my girl for so long. Yeah. And it was like, I mean, getting married was like, why not? It was easy. Like, I, I'm doing this for God. Yeah. But like you said, man, I feel like they don't talk about the compatibility things. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about, they say, yeah, go to therapy or um, premarital counseling, but what is that really? Yeah. That ain't really nothing. Well, it, it, like it, It's a runway. Yeah. Like it ain't could, the whole... Yeah. yeah, you feel me? So it's yeah. like, because they're not really introducing what, what the things that can keep us together. Right. they just saying that we should be together, be yeah. getting married. Yeah. Like, okay, I could do that. Yeah. But then where's the help? Boy, and you, and you need that. That's why I say, but even choosing your community is, because I, I mean, I'm grateful. God put me where he put me. That probably wasn't the healthiest place for me to be. I'm grateful now. You know, my church, my community, my pastors, all of them is legit. They brilliant people now. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's part of this part of the struggle just being from where we from and being in the black community is like, you know, we wasn't we we didn't get access to a lot of the information, a lot of the education like we could have, you know what I mean? So I get it, you know, but 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 to your what you were saying though, I think people gotta follow their convictions, man, because Cause I'm not the type of person that's like cussing and drinking is what makes you serious follower of God or not. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm not that person. Like everything can be abused, but it's it's about the intention. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What was the first miracle? Jesus turned water into wine. Mm. He clearly didn't have no problem with drinking, but it's what's our intention. Mm. My intention was not to be merry and have a good time, my intention was to suffocate my problems and not deal with stuff, to not be sober. You know what I'm saying? So it's what's the intention. Like, my intention was never to just like, yeah, I'm gonna have a drink. I I can't remember the last time I had a drink. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I would never go out and have a drink or two. That was never my style. I'm like, we finna get, like, I'm going home faded. So you was getting drunk in public? Because I could handle it. Because you would have never known. My decision making was bad, but my my countenance straight. I could drink half a bottle. But where you was drinking, like I'm like, cause oh, if yeah. somebody see Lecrae at a bar, yeah, you gonna see me at the bar. What you doing in here? You know what I'm saying? Well, yo, I just seen Lecrae. Yeah, what you doing in here? Yo, I seen you at the club. Yeah, you what you doing in there? Well, I'm not. What you not? What you don't love God? You do love God. 
So what you doing in here? Why you why you judging me? If you ain't here, we ain't here together. You know, so so sometimes people be like, yo, I respect that. I respect that. I I, I see what you on. One time I had a dude, I'm in um, I was it's years back. I'm in Sweet Lounge in Atlanta. The dude come up to me, you know, because back then the DJs is playing my records too. They playing blessings with me and Ty Dollar Sign. Like, yo, we got Lecrae in the building. And like, what's up? What's up? You know what I'm saying? And then some some dude came over to me, he's like, yo, I know you be on them hoes, bro. And I'm like, nah. He was like, you lying, bro. I'm like, nah. But his brain can't, his brain is like, if I'm in here and that's what I'm on, that got to be what you on. Projecting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, nah, I'm really just here with my homies. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong for trying to suffocate my problems through this alcohol. But I ain't on that type of time. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but I mean, shit, that's a, bro, that's open the door to, we got to talk about it, the Diddy parties, right? <laughs> I mean, you, oh, you you did it. You you did it yourself. I mean, shit. But so, <laughs> so wait, wait. First, first of all, yeah. Because again, I am a man and I do care about the person, right? Yeah. So it ain't just about a story. I, I saw you say, like, maybe I shouldn't have said this. Right. But why? Okay, because now I'm Before we even get to oh, let me ahead. clarify. I ain't never been to one of those Diddy parties. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like them private, secret, crazy. I mean, it's over now. You can't clarify nothing. The Diddy party is Diddy party. So yeah. it, well. It, it, it just is what it is. But but what I'm saying is, <laughs> I'm messing with you. What I'm saying is, I don't know nothing about that private situation. Mm -hmm. Like, like where I'm at, the media is invited. There's mm -hmm. media there. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm at, it's fans who look in it. They can look inside. The gate is right there. You can look and see who's all in there. And I know because some of my homies couldn't get in the gate because mm -hmm. they was outside, like seeing us get in. You, you used know to mess up friend, man. You supposed to bring your homies with hey, you? Hey, they 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 didn't have the right clothes on. That ain't oh, my all right. fault. That ain't my fault. <laughs> all right. But all I'm saying is, man, you it's media there. It's food trucks there. It's, I mean, everybody's there. Like, it's 400 people in that mug. So it's not like some private, like, secret room. Now, I don't know what was going on in the house. We was outside, so we outside. I don't know what's happening in the house. I'm not I'm not invited into the house. It's a velvet rope. You know what I'm saying? And some people went back behind the velvet rope, but there was a bodyguard right there. Now, what went on behind the velvet rope? I can't tell you, but the general, the people who was outside was not allowed to go back there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm there with Nelly... Me and Nelly chopping it up. Chris Brown's having a dance off with some people. Jimmy Iovine and Madonna over there chilling. Like, it's just a barbecue. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like this. I think people, when you don't have access to it, your brain is creating scenarios. But it was a barbecue. It was like a outdoor. Think of anything outdoor, a mixer. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't. It wasn't what people now. If he have some other kind of parties where it get freaky deaky, I don't know nothing about that. I wasn't I wasn't privy to that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I've been a I've been to plenty Hollywood events and parties, Grammy Week, BT Weekend. It's always something you getting invited to somebody's house or somebody's mixer. That's what people, you know, in the industry, Cash Money having a party. You go to the Cash Money party. It's execs there. It's blah blah blah. It's not like a private little thing. It's like, oh, so and so is gonna perform. You know what I'm saying? So I've been to plenty of those types of things. I've only been to one, like, private party, and it wasn't Diddy. It was a, 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 a person in Atlanta, and I don't know how out of hand it got, but it was it, it looked sketchy to me, and I was like, all right, I'm out. That's the party you said you had to leave at a certain time? I saw two dudes, you know, making out on the couch, and I was like, Oh, they they really they they going crazy. Like it's just a party there, and these two dudes are going crazy. Like they at their own house. And then I got upstairs. I seen another girl and another dude making out. And I said, Oh, it's about to be one of them. Mm. I'm a yeah, I'm a slide. Yeah, 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 I'm a slide. You but you said at, like when I said you was like you maybe you shouldn't have said that. But only because at the in that in that era. Like, media don't give you no... Like, they take the clip they want, and then they run wild with it. So for me, I was like, I should have been smarter and realized, ah, yeah, you know what? I probably shouldn't have said that because just like they might take a clip of this, you can't clarify. Like, if I say, you know, 
my friend said God ain't real. And I was like, I feel that. Th they'll stop it right there. See, Lecrae agreed with his friend, you know, that God ain't real. It's like, that's what media does right now. So I was like, all right, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but it is what it is. It, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yo, as much as I want to talk about that, it's other, like, more important shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do want to talk about that, but whatever. That's going to get the clicks and the likes, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you mentioned good. somewhere where you had white friends and they were able to, like, wrestle with you about yeah. their ideas on racism, racism. right? Yeah. You have people that aren't Christians that's able to wrestle their ideas with you about not being Christian. And basically what you were saying is they have the grace to come to you, speak freely, and yeah. know that you're still going to love them for who they are. Yeah. But you don't feel like you get that from your people. Or is this before you found yeah. out that you got, the, these people aren't the majority? Was that before then? It was before then, but also even still now, it's still like, I think there's just a level of discomfort that people, they, they scared to like, Again, that's some of that is just America, bro. Like that's just like like being black in America, probably being anything other than white. White in America is the majority ethnicity. So the way they move is kind of the standard. Mm. So when we move Historically, we've had to like, oh, I got to change the way I speak when I enter this room. I got to change the way I dress when I enter this room because I got to match their standard. That You don't never see white people worrying about that. They're not like, oh, I hope I'm black enough. Mm. You're like, right? Unless they want to be cool, but it don't stop them from excelling in society. Like, ain't nobody going to be like, you're not like, man, I don't know if I talk black enough to get a job. Nobody says that. Mm. You know what I mean? Unless you want to be a rapper or something, like, it's not a, a real thing. Like, you don't, no one, if you want to go work for IBM or Apple or well, Delta, you're not thinking, I hope I sound black enough to work here. Mm. But constantly, black people or whoever, minorities are constantly thinking, I hope I can adjust myself to fit the standard. And the standard is white. Mm. So what I'm saying is, like, we know all about white culture. We live and breathe it every day. We know all your shows. We know all your songs. We know Jonas Brothers. We know all the TV shows, but you don't know our world. Mm. So what I'm saying is because there's a lack of information and insight, my white friends, they, they admit, I don't know your world, right? Can I ask these questions without it being sketchy? But I don't get that freedom. You know what I'm saying? To say, hey, let me tell you about my oh, here we go with the race stuff. Oh, here we go. And I'm like, bro, I'm not, it's not, I'm not even on that. I'm just But even oh, you just giving me the alley oops to all the, the messy shit. But I'm sorry. Yeah. Even within our own ethnic group, yeah, with our own people, it's my dog. I love you, bro. But I gotta go there. You don't get that grace with the white people, but even Christians though. Like for oh. example. You say righteous and ratchet. Yeah. Right? And then, my dog, I love you, D1. But now you got people, other, other prominent figures yeah. coming straight at you about, like, <clears throat> what you're saying instead of maybe trying to understand. Yeah. Right? Just like you said, like, yeah. not giving you the leeway to really, like, explain or, or break things down in, in your intention. I think... I think with D1... I think he means well. I think he generally is like, man, I want people to be better. And, you know, the way that whole situation went down was, um, he was talking about ratchetness, something about ratchet, right? And I was like, I don't agree with that. But I also have... It, it, it was starting to, like, catch wind in, like, his commentary. And, like, I think uh, Van Lathan, like, shot back at him, said something, like, you know what I'm saying? And there were some points that he said that I did agree with, some points I didn't agree with. But I also knew, like, it was, I was about to release a line of Righteous and Ratchet. And mm -hmm. so I was like, that's going to cause confusion. Let me get in front of it and let me speak on Righteous and Ratchet. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want that to, you know, let me let me say my piece before this line drop. 
So I say my piece. He like, yo, man, I got to respond to what you just said. You know what I'm saying? Publicly. I don't move like that. Like, that, that could be a generational thing. I just don't move like that. The way I'm raised, we handle stuff behind the scenes. I don't go public back and forth with people like that. Like, you got my, my number, I got yours. Let's handle it. So he handled it publicly. I hit him on the side like, bro, we can talk about this. You know what I'm saying? It's all love. I ain't tripping. Blah, blah, blah. We cleared it up. I don't know if he believed that my line, so so then I dropped the clothing line. I don't know if he believed that that was already coming. I think he didn't believe it. He was like, so you just gonna drop a clothing line like you really trying to go to war with me on some on this type of stuff? And I'm like, nah, it's not even that type of time. It's really just, that was already coming. So it really ain't have nothing to do with you. So then offline, we get to talking about the term ratchet. And he like, I'm from Louisiana, this is where it's birthed. I said, I feel you. I said, I think it's a miscommunication because the way I see Ratchet is like ghetto. I, I see him as interchangeable. He see it as more like, like raunchy, sinful, nasty. You know what I'm saying? I see it as ghetto. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if 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 the right song come on at my house and my wife stand on top of the countertop, like, hey, that to me, that's ratchet. You a ratchet. You know what I'm saying? But but she still loved the Lord. That's just her song. She like, you know what I mean? And so that's how I'm looking at it. So I'm like, yeah, I'm ratchet and righteous. Like, I'm still a little ghetto. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm still a little hood. But I but I'm I'm still, I still love the Lord. So that's where the miscommunication. He's like, nah, brother, you can't tell me that you don't, you don't get what I'm trying to. And I was like, I really honestly see it differently than you. But if that's how you see it, I respect it. You know what I'm saying? So I just don't handle stuff online. Like, that's not how I move. Um, so I don't know, you know, that could be a generational gap. That could be, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here and say, cause I know people say, oh, he was cloud chasing. He just cloud chasing. That's why he does everything online. I'm not going to say that cause I don't know that man's heart. I just know I don't move like that. You know what I'm saying? So if, 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 if people want to have a judgment against me, you know, if it's legit, shoot me the DM. And if it's like, if, if, if it's a, if it's worth my time and my effort, I'll go back and forth with you on it to have some understanding. But there's, I forgot the name of the law. It's a it's a law, like a philosophical law, where you're not really going to change their perspective because every argument you have, they just building up another one yeah, to come back at you. Almost like you're digging a deeper hole. Yeah. And it's funny because this is less about D1. Like I said, that's, that's like my friend. I, yeah. Like, we pray together. Shout out to my dog. Yeah. My only thing about it, because I don't agree with everything, but none of my friends, not even my mother. So, like, I don't yeah. feel, I'm cool on disagreeing with somebody. Yeah. My thing is, What's wrong with that? Even if it is sinful, yeah. I got a long way in my walk. So I can say this, you might can't say this. Yeah. Why can't you quote Corinthians and Cardi B? Why can't you be okay. righteous and right? Because at the end, so what I will say is maybe being a public figure promoting that, all right, yeah. cool, I get that. Because again, to whom much is given, much is required. So right. I, I can understand that argument. Right. But but trying to live under this construct that it can't happen. We're ignoring the duality that we have as humans. I mean, so how can you say that? I, I, to I me, to me, all I'm trying to do is create. Like again, I'm not trying to promote the chaos that a lot of times our our people promote. Like it does frustrate me. You know what I'm saying? Like I do want there to be better representation of who we are as a people. But I also just realized, man. <clears throat> Even the Bible said a leper is not going to change his spots. Mm. Like, sinners going to sin, bro. Like, you're not going to convince a person, like, to be something that, like, be better. We can't be better. That's why we need Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Technically, you, that's why we're here. But. Yeah, you, you're not going to convince yeah. somebody yeah. to be better. So I guess can't, like, people are like, yo, why you didn't tell so-and-so to, to stop doing this? And I'm like, it's just morality, man. Like, that ain't no heart change. Like. I mean, yeah, you can mask it, but will we just want them to mask it? Hmm. So I'm not trying to promote nonsense. I'm just saying I'm helping people acknowledge they do live in that space, and I'm a bridge. Hmm. And so I'm just saying I acknowledge you. I, di I don't want to go too far with it and be like, Dad, if, if y'all feel like I'm promoting some nonsense, I'll take that back because that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to present common ground. Hmm. And sometimes I may get it wrong. Just like in somebody's desire to be righteous, they may go too far, be judgmental. They're mm. going to get it wrong. We wired different. Some people are prophets. Some people are priests. I'm in a priest stage in my life. You know what I'm saying? 
Somebody may be in a prophetic stage in their life where they want to preach to everybody. This going to happen and you need to stop this. That's cool. We need that. But you may be being too judgmental. Like, that's where you're going to drop the ball. And me trying to be a priest, I'm more loving. Hey, bro, what's going on with you? Let's talk. Let's build. What you got going on? Man, I was at I was at Magic City. I spent all my money. I was on cocaine, bro. I'm not going to judge you. Come on, come to the crib. Let's talk about it. Let's da, 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 da. Now, I may drop the ball and be too accommodating. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe I maybe I maybe I'm making him feel like it's okay. It, yeah. So mm. it's cool. I get it. We both going to drop the ball in areas, but that's why we need each other. Mm. Yeah. Do you think cuz it's mm. funny I, speaking of judgmental, I feel like maybe cuz I'm older and I see better now, but like I feel like in today's age we see so many critiques of like Kirk Franklin. Yeah. Right? And I, I remember like, I think you said like, you were getting compared to him at one point in your career, yeah. but you wanted to like run away from that. Yeah, for sure. Was that because you were judging him at a time? No, I wasn't really judging him. <clears throat> I just didn't want people to put me in that gospel box. Mm. Cause I was like, that's like Kirk. I don't think I ever really judged Kirk for real, for real. Like I just, he was in his own lane. And I was like, yo, you in your own lane. <clears throat> I just don't want to be seen as baby Kirk Franklin because mm -hmm. I'm doing like, oh, Kirk did a song with this celebrity. Lecrae doing a song. Like, he breaking ground like Kirk. But now I see it as a sign of respect. I see what they were saying. They was mm -hmm. giving me honor. Mm -hmm. But at the time, I was like, don't put me in that box. Because Kirk, Kirk from the hood, but he churchy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not churchy. Yeah. I don't even know how churchy works. You know what I'm saying? So... But there's people who are churchy. I you know I used to I used to be a little bit judgmental against churchy people. I'm not gonna lie to you on that. Just because it was weird to me. I just didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? Like I just be like, I'd be like, bro, you 25 years old. Why you why you wearing suits and saying blessed brother? I li favorite? live a little. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, it's weird to me, bro. It's just it's strange. Like, I love God. I don't dress like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I just I just didn't want to be seen as churchy. That's mm -hmm. that's really the biggest thing. I was while I was going mm -hmm. with that, I was wondering, do you see the difference now that you have the success that you have, right? Yeah. He has the success that he has. He's a yeah. legend for sure. Yeah. Do you see like, like more similarities than differences? Oh, yeah. When you first because when you first come out, you you like, man, I'm not Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Time. Big time. I, I totally get it. And then now we we friends, like that's like big bro. Mm -hmm. So now it's like I, I get it even more. You mm -hmm. know, like I'm like, I, I see how we both thinking and processing and we got similar missions, you know, and just in terms of how we how we move. And, and you're going to get a lot of flack for that because people are not going to understand your mission. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, for him, he like, <clears throat> y'all think we lame? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what lame is. Because mm -hmm. he's really a musical genius. People don't realize that. Like, mainstream artists looked at him because he, he was a genius. But he's like, I'm going to use all my genius for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And and most people won't do that. Like most of the most talented Christians in music, they like, nah, I can't do that. Cause it's way more love over here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot, like you'd be surprised at how many people are solid, God-fearing followers of Jesus, but they the biggest artists in some whole other area, but they like, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. That's I can't put all my, my yacht in that little pond over there. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. So Kirk's like, I'm I'm putting my whole yacht in this pond. So y'all going to be like, yeah, you got to respect that. Mm. You got to respect that. And so my mission is similar in a sense of just like, we don't fit in the box you want us to fit in. Like, take us out that box. Like, I don't really fool with church. I don't really fool with God. I don't know about, man, God, God don't really speak to me. I do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They don't really make music. I do. And nobody really, I do. What you going to say now? Mm. You know what I'm saying? They don't really be in the prisons. I do. What you gonna say? You know it's crazy saying? because they, as much as you try not to be in that box, you still got people that make little statements of like, what somebody said, you couldn't be a mainstream rapper, so like you decided oh, to yeah. be a gospel rapper. It's I like, hate that one. oh, you ain't that cool, so you could just be cool yeah, over here. Yeah. It's like, bro, what do y'all be thinking, bro? Yeah, you could You weren't good enough for varsity, so you the JV <laughs> All Star. <laughs> you know they just what I'm do JV All Star. Yeah. Like what, bro? Like nah. that'd be crazy. If I bro. if this is JV, I chose it. I didn't like. I could have played varsity. Mm -hmm. I did, I decided not to. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like, oh, you overseas with it, huh? You didn't make the You didn't make the league. Like, nah, I chose to play overseas. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I saw the value here and wanted to be here. 
um, this wasn't this wasn't second choice for me. This was my first choice. And I remember when I was making my first album, I'd be in the studio with a lot of producers and stuff, and they would be like, "Bro, you sure you want to do it just for God?" And I was like, "Absolutely." It was like you kind of dope though. Oh, light bulb just went off. Hold up. Didn't you turn down a um a Kendrick Lamar song or something like? That? So, I didn't turn it down. What I did was I didn't pursue it. So Kendrick said, when me and you do a record together, that's going to be the world. And I never pursued it because I was too concerned about our relationship. You know mm. what I'm saying? I didn't want him to feel like I'm only over here so I can get that feature. So I never brought it up. I never said nothing. I never, like we would talk on a regular basis. He asked me questions, blah, 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 blah. Nah, bro. I'm not. Because <clears throat> at the time, I felt like, and I don't know how, if I would have done anything different, I don't know. But at the time, I felt like, because we, I remember us having this conversation about Bob Marley. And I was like, bro, at the time, I just felt like God was doing something special with him. And I was like, man, I don't want to encroach on that. I don't mm. want to, like, you got enough people pulling at you. So for me, it was like, nah, I'm not pushing that button at all. So given what just transpired, do you regret that? I don't <clears throat> I don't regret it because it would have been a moment in history. But it's like lots of people have a Kendrick Rich Rich, I mean, Rich the Kid got a Kendrick feature. It's not it's a moment in history. It's not like it solidifies you or makes you somebody. I think I'm just grateful to be like, man, I'm like, I know, buddy. You know what I'm saying? I'm grateful mm -hmm. to be like, yo, I know K Dot. I'm grateful to be like, I got to witness a juggernaut in hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, in terms of skill and craftsmanship, he could grow as a man as we all could. You know what I'm saying? He not otherworldly to me, but he is a rap juggernaut. He is an Avenger. So do you still <clears throat> listen to rap music? Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. cause you know, bro. Christians like you're not supposed to listen to secular music. Some I, of them, I mean, I got a I, I got a podcast coming out about that. Hey, I, I don't know, man. I just got a trade like I'm being careful. So yeah, since you do listen to rap music, did you think uh, Drake stood any chance against Kendrick Lamar? No, no, no. not a small chance. No, nah. oh, he was crazy. Drake is a great rapper, but Kendrick's from the culture. You see, what I'm saying like yeah. like you can. I, I mean, this is my opinion. Hot take. Hot take. Drake is a phenomenal rapper. And uh, Ghost Riders aside, he's a great rapper. I know he can really rap. But Drake is a fan of the culture. Mm. Kendrick is a product of the culture. It's a difference. Like, it's like, it's why the USA keep winning in basketball overseas because it's like, no, we built it. We started this. We made this. Mm. Y'all are fans of this. And... It's gonna come a day, like now it's a part of their culture. Now it's a part of the fabric of, of, of Europe where it's like, all right, y'all ain't to be played with no more. You know what I'm saying? I think Drake is the beginning of like that Euro League. Like he the first one to be like, nah, this is really global now, homie. But to me, hip hop is, it ain't even about global. Let me, let me, re, let me retract that. This is what I'll say. It ain't about global. Hip hop. Rap music has pretty much always been about people coming from the trenches, dealing with some 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 train, some trauma, some pain, the struggle. Yeah, it's why Eminem can gets the, gets the rock like that because he really come from that. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to pop it like that if you don't really come from that. It's hard to have that dog in you if that's not you know what I'm saying. If your mama was making you lunch as an adult. It's hard to just pop it like that, bro. It's just, that's, that just ain't the same. Yo, you is crazy. I'm just, I'm just it just ain't the same, bro. I'm letting you go. <laughs> this is gonna be a crazy clip, but you going crazy. I'm like, nah, hey, I'm, not, you go. I'm, I'm just, I mean, I'm so, not gonna get no Drake feature, so I, it don't bother me. Like, <laughs> so you want, if Drake was like, yeah, I'm trying to do the song with Lecrae, you wouldn't do it? Depends on what the song's about. Depends on what the song's about. Okay. I mean, if we talk on some neutral territory, for so, sure. So, I still think he's a dope artist. Don't get it twisted. I think he's a dope artist. He just mm -hmm. not from, he not cut from that cloth. So basically you're saying Kendrick Lamar is the NFL and Drake is Canadian League. I don't know about Canadian League. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a, I mean, no, <laughs> no slight to nobody in the Canadian League. That's a big gap. That's a crazy that gap. That gap is crazy. <laughs> I ain't putting them in. I'm saying like, I'm saying like Serbia or France versus Team USA. Oh, all right. I'm, I'm, basketball. <laughs> I'm saying the gap ain't that wide. Like Europeans, they balling right now. But I'm just saying as a whole, like we started it. Like it's our it's our thing. So we that's why we've been so dominant at it. I'm mm. just saying, as far as rap is concerned, you still gotta have that. It gotta be, it gotta be in you, not just on you. Now I ain't, I can't even say you're right, man. I, I thought I personally thought Drake was gonna hold it down. I had to make a public pop, a yeah. public apology, man. Kendrick yeah. got him out the way. But you got some new music coming. Yeah, I got some new music. What you got way. coming up, man? I'm uh, I'm cooking on an album right now. So the album Number you know 11? I guess that's number 11. You counting, I didn't even know. That's crazy. Yeah. 11 is crazy. That is crazy. Um Yeah, cooking on the album. Always trying to reinvent myself. Always trying to grow. You know what I'm saying? Like um I think I took a page from from Ye's book on that in terms of just like how he's able to have the longevity he's had. He just always it's a new version of him every time you come into contact. So you like, what's going to happen this time? Um, so, but I got a new single called Lift Me Up with my guy Beam. And, um, you know, that'll be coming down, the, you know, the pipeline. And it's just, it's just, it's more of that type of talk of just like, man, I still need God in the midst of the pain and the struggle to lift me up. I still need to believe that he got me even when it gets ugly. Mm. And, uh, and, and, uh, you know, true story, Cause I don't care. I've been in the game so long. I give away the secrets. But true story, my guy Bean. So there was a, a reggae artist named Papa San who was big in Jamaica. Then he became a Christian, and he was big in like Christian reggae scene. His son is Bean. <clears throat> Bean did a lot of production for us over the years. Some some songs with us. But then he became a big writer. He started writing for Bieber, Rihanna, everybody. So he wrote this song, this 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 hook for Ye. And thinking like Ye's going down the spiritual path. And then Ye went a whole nother way. Yeah. And so Beam had this, this hook, this idea, and he was like, him and his team was like, we feel like you should have this. So I heard it. The production and the hook alone, I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And I could hear why, I could hear how it would fit Ye so well. But thank you, Kanye, for. No, no, not no. thank you for for wilding. <laughs> I'm but, about to say because you was wilding, <laughs> you was bucking right now. <laughs> not thank you for wilding, but for saying no. I'm, this guy going crazy. The, like, the thank reason you for walking why, away from. Nah, nah, nah. nah <laughs> let me thank you for saying that. This nigga's crazy. But just saying that, hey, this song is is nuts. Yo, <laughs> wait, all eleven projects, all your projects. I'm gonna let you yeah. go to him. What it's on your own label? Yeah. So we did one um, joint venture with Columbia, but it wasn't. It was like a, um, it wasn't like they had ownership, you know what I'm saying? So we still retain ownership, but we just did a joint venture with them to see how it would work. So and all your stuff is like independent? A hundred percent. Whew. hundred percent. And you got a lot of money, bro. I mean, <laughs> I just do it independent. How them times look, bro? You still top of tippers? Do it <laughs> independent. My pastor loves me, man. I bet he do. <laughs> God, Jeez. nah, man. It, it, you, you. I will say this, man. Like, in whatever you do, if you can't have some sort of, you know, partnership, co ownership, ownership, some something, it's gonna be beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's just. I don't care if you selling socks online. Like, like, man, like. It's just gonna be a better situation for you because then you get to like be in charge of how you interact with the people, get the people exactly what they want, and it's not just about getting retaining a hundred percent of it. It's about having creative control and having it go out the way that you want. I'll take, you know, a a percentage of something if I'm an owner in it. If I know that my voice is heard. In in the in what we doing, but just to be like, yeah, I'm just here as a, you know, riding on your train wherever your train goes, and that's where I gotta go. I'm I've just never been about that life, bro. I know I gotta let you go, bro. I so I got yeah. so many more questions, bro. Maybe you could do this, do part two. Quick question for yeah. my business: B side. What is that? B 
East Side is a... Uh, Don't give me the commercial spill. Nah, so my so I have a podcast called The Deep End. Mm-hmm. The Deep End, you know, obviously you can see it on YouTube, but then there's also an app called The B-Side where there's a group of us who have different podcasts. And it's like what faith and culture intersect. And we call it The B-Side. It's an app where it's like you get behind the scenes, you get exclusive information, you get some lessons, it goes deeper. So maybe you heard something on one of the podcasts and you like, yo, that was fire. Well, there's a whole lesson that go with it. Or maybe mm-hmm. you want to hear some conversations with us. Like you listen to his podcast, you listen to her podcast, you listen to mine. And maybe you want to hear a whole conversation. So like, like Michelle Williams from Destiny Child, my guy, Tim Ross, myself, we sat down, we had a conversation, but you get access to that on the B-Side app and you get all of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you are part, part owner. Yeah. Cause yeah. I was wondering like, bro, you got to have some stake in this. <laughs> Ooh. Well, I mean, hey, can I get some sponsorship dollars, bro? You want me to promote it on you, here? Look, clearly, you sponsored. I mean, yeah, but I mean, clearly you I need some more sponsors. Is Bel Bel Air signed back there? Bel- I, I can't get these kind. This is where the money at. They won't sponsor me. I'm too safe. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I don't. It's I, cool. I don't. I want need the some more sponsors, I can't man. Do with I need that. some some more sponsors. Like you know what I mean, what I'm saying, hey, man. Like, I'm you, like the B side. Like it look good. You, you clean it up a little bit. You know, you, I'm trying to tell you, people don't be realizing, man. I be like, boy, when you profanity free. You don't be realizing a, a door isn't open for you. You all get right. them phone calls from the the Hawks. That's my next. All right, cool. That's my next. That's my next goal. <laughs> Profanity free, but the tequila up. All right, I'm saying that's the next goal. We trying to get this bag, man. But nah, yeah. bro, I appreciate you for real. For nah, it's all up, love, though. man. It's good. Um, good any any uh missed opportunities? Anything we missed on? Nah, man. Just make sure you you know check out the B side. Check out the Deep End podcast. You know, look forward to the new album, the new single, Lift Me Up, featuring Beams on the way. And um, yeah, man. Stay tuned. You know what I mean. My guy, Lecrae, man. J-Hill. J-Hill Podcast is a wrap. We out.